Welcome to module 44 on point set topology course. So today we will continue our study of properties which are preserved under products, productive properties. So let us begin with this uh, proposition. You start with a arbitrary product of topological spaces xj pick up a point in it so xj will be first countable at that point if and only if each factor xj is first countable at x small j for all j inside j so all coordinate points are having a first countable base at that point. Okay, that is the first condition. Second condition is that the subset SX of the indexing set, all J belong to J, such that this xj is not a Sierpinski point in xj. Look at all that point, all that uh, the indices. That set sx must be countable. Then the other part is if and only if. So then the reverse is also true, which is what the proposition says. These are somewhat. Uh, not very straightforward. So let us go through the proof carefully. Okay. So first suppose xj is first countable, the product space. At the point x belonging to xj. That means that we have a countable sub base, countable base, local base for xj at the point xj. That is the meaning of this first countable. Then A follows from the fact that all the coordinate projections are open and surjective. So if you take Pi of B, where B range is over the countable base, that will give you countable base for xi at the point xi. Okay, so this we have seen that uh, first countability is weakly hereditary in the sense that under open surjective maps, it is preserved. <clears throat> so part A is proved. The second part is something, some peculiar thing. Okay. <clears throat> Suppose that for some uncountable subset i of j, xi is not, you know, what is this I have taken? It's origin Sierpinski's point. Okay, that is what I want here. This is uh, this is next theorem, sorry. What I'm doing here, yeah, to prove P, suppose. P is a countable neighborhood of system of xj at this point and sx is not countable. You want to prove that xx is not countable. That means what? There are uncountably many points x sub j, right? And they are not Sierpinski's point means that they have proper open subsets as neighborhoods. The Sierpinski point is defined to be such a point wherein the only open set containing that point is the whole space, right? So, not a Sierpinski's point means xj belongs to uj, uj open, and uj is a proper subset of xi, xj. For every j inside, 
SX, which SX is uncount, SX is not countable. Set of such points which are SX means what? They are Sierpinski's points. So now I am assuming that this is not countable. Now what happens? This is countable, this is not countable, or something happens here. Then for each Pj inverse of Uj, Pj inverse of Uj is a sub basic open set, right? There must be a V belonging to B. That is, B is the countable base at the point capital X, right? Uh, at the point this X belonging to Xj. So this V must be inside Pj inverse of Uj for J in SX. Okay. By Pj null principle, why, for each uh, uh, V, there is such a thing. I mean, for each, but number of points in B is only countable. But these Js coming from SX are uncountable. So it follows that one of the V inside B for which this happens for an uncountable subset I of SX. Right? If all of them are countable, or countable even a countable sets will be SX will be countable. So that means that Pj of V when you project J coordinate that is contained inside Ui because V is contained in the Pj inverse of Ui. And this is happening and Ui's are not the whole space. So Pj of V are proper open subsets, contain proper open subsets for every J. That is a contradiction to this basic fact that we have observed earlier. Okay, this must happen at, at most for finite limit, right? All other things, it must be equal to whole of xj. So, but now we have got a uncountable thing. So, there is a contradiction. So, that proves, that proves what? One way. So, I have to prove converse. Suppose A and B are true, then I have to show that xj has a countable base at the point x. So, that is easier actually. Choose a countable local base bi at xi for every xi, where i is inside sx. Remember what is sx? sx is set of points wherein the xj, these, these xj's are not shaping this point. For those things, I am choosing a countable pairs. For others, what should I choose? It doesn't matter because the only open set containing xj will be the whole of xj. It doesn't matter. You can, xj is the countable base itself. So you can ignore them. That's the meaning. Okay. But now I have chosen for each j, I have chosen a countable base at xj and sx is countable. So this sx, curly sx, is set of all pi inverse of b, where b is inside this countable family and i raise over all sx. This is countable. So these are countably many on countably many sets, so they are countably many uh, subsets here. So this is a countable family. Okay, therefore, if you take finite intersections of members of this, that is Bx, that will be also countable. Okay, but once you take Bx finite intersections, that becomes a local base at XJ for the product space. The Sierpinski points, where see all those indices, they don't trouble you at all. Okay, because the entire space, and as soon as you take some open subset around corresponding xj there, around x little j, it will be entire space. Okay, so for those things, you don't have to take finite intersections. Only on this family you have to take. So that will become a countable base at x. 
Now, why I have proved this one so <coughs> carefully is this is point wise. Now, the same proof will work, go through if you want to do globally. Okay, proof will be the same thing, but statement will be slightly different. What is that? Because now you are taking for all points this is happening. Okay, you want to do that. That is for first countability at all the points. Well, this first countability at a single point, right? First countability at all the points. So that is our next theorem. Xj is first countable if and only if each xj is first countable that is the first part this is point wise is also point wise is first part but the second part says that xj is in discrete space for all but a countable number of j inside j if all the points are sierpinski's points in a space right that is an indiscrete space that is the difference between uh, condition B here and condition B in the previous proposition. And that should happen, but for a countable setup. For countable subset, anything can happen. Other than that, it must be, all of them must be in discrete spaces. Okay. Yeah, in this product with indiscrete space does not disturb the rest of the things. That's what the theme is here. Okay. So let us go through this one, but this is more or less like uh, the previous theorem now, previous proposition. Let xj be first countable, then first countability of each xj for j follows from the above proposition. Okay. Same thing like open surjective maps preserve the first countability. So this process. Next, suppose for an uncountable set i of j, x i's are not indiscrete. Okay, this means that we can select x i belong to x i, which is not a Sierpinski point for each i inside i, and this is an uncountable set. Okay, so having chosen x i's, you take a point x which has these as the coordinates ith coordinate is equal to xi. If choose an x belong to xj, be any point is that pi of x is equal to f xi on this uncountable set. Other things can be anything. Then from the proposition above, it follows that xj is not first countable at that point x because condition b of the proposition is not satisfied. So it's by contradiction, you can prove that the property P B follows. Okay. The converse is also easy here. Suppose I contained inside J be such that I contained inside is countable and XJ is indiscrete for J in the complement. This is the condition we want. Away from a countable set, it should be, you know indiscrete. All of them should be indiscrete. Then for each x in xj, we select a countable local base bj at xj for each j in, inside i. See, again you have to do it point-wise now, construction. Okay. The indiscreteness gives you for all points, the Sierpinski condition b is uh, uh, satisfied. Therefore, the same uh, conclusion that we have done there will work for this model also. Okay, P, J, inverse of U, J, where U, J is inside P, J, and J is inside I. This I is countable. So check that this forms a local base. Okay, this is repetition of the previous part. But the only thing is having an indiscrete space away from a countable set will give you the Sierpinski points, okay, just uh, naturally out of those things. The SX, the condition SX is countable, will be satisfied. Now, 
we just make a statement and uh, it is the proof is straightforward <clears throat> let xj okay is countable product of an arbitrary product of topological spaces this will be second countable if filled on leaf each factor xj is second countable and xj's are in discrete except for a countable number of j and j so exactly same thing as first countability so this time you don't have to worry about point wise so take a base go back go back come back and so on the same proof will work let us come to now separability in our list Separability is a tricky business. Okay, one has to be a bit careful here. But whenever things happen, it happens easily also. It is easy to check that if each xj is separable and j is countable, then xj is separable. Okay, all that you have to do is product of ai's the closure is equal to the closure of the each a closure of product of ai okay first take the product and then take the closure is the same thing as first take all the closures and then take the product so if ai's are dense in xi ai bar will be the whole of xi okay then you take the countable product and then take the, the closure that will be that the only thing is this is always true but when the product of countable set is countable it has to be used if you take uncountable product it will not be countable all right so countability uh, is has to be preserved so you have to take j to be countable that's all but there is a curious phenomena here namely even if the cardinality of j is the first uncountable which is denoted by the c is cardinality of r for example okay the first continuum okay then xj turns out to be separable though the argument i have given doesn't work and it is not an easy argument here. So we have no time to do that one. And you know, it is not uh, used by us anywhere, anywhere. So I have given you a reference. You can look into that, namely Villard's book. However, if cardinality of J is bigger than C, then even this will fail. Each of xj may be separable, but the product may not be, be may not be separable. Okay. So let us uh, let us stop here for uh, uh, today. Just summing up what we have done so far. So after hereditary property and co-hereditary properties, checking for various things, namely connectivity, path connectivity, compactness, Lindelofness, first countability, second countability, and separability. Then yesterday and today we checked about first countability and second countability and separability. Okay. So this is the gist of the various properties of topological properties that we have studied so far all right so we have still more thing to do with product properties namely compactness and lindelofness we have yet to worry about them so that is another uh, topic so that will be taken next time okay so thank you